Hello, friends. It's a special episode of Margaritas with Margarita Cheng, CFP Pro, where for 15 minutes, usually every Friday at 5 p.m. happy hour, Rita shines a light on amazing people who are helping us all manage our money. Dana Wilson is the founder and CEO of CHIP, which stands for Changing How Individuals Prosper. She is an experienced financial professional with more than 15 years of financial services industry experience. She's currently an executive MBA candidate at Penn State University studying strategic leadership and corporate innovation, all while she's running her company, CHIP. And we're going to find out all about her company and grad school and all the rest. So take it away, Rita. Well, thank you so much for that warm introduction. And Dana, I so appreciate you being here. You are definitely one incredible individual who really is innovating. And when people think financial services, I don't know that they think about innovation, but you are making it happen. So thank you for all that you're doing. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, when you're reading my bio, I'm like, man, I, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all is good. Now I'm excited to, to be here with you all today. So thank you for having me. Of course. So if you don't mind sharing with our readers and listeners, we know they can go to Google, but they want to hear from you. So tell us about CHIP, why CHIP, and what you are on a mission to change. Yeah, absolutely. So CHIP stands for Changing How Individuals Prosper. And what we do is we make it easier for consumers of financial products to find uh, financial professionals of color. We have a specific focus on Black and Latinx financial professionals. But the reason I started CHIP was really just out of my uh, career in financial services. So I started out in banking, moved into insurance, worked in wealth management, and then ran my own independent investment advisory practice for about six and a half years before uh, jumping into financial technology. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring CHIP into the world was because I was always in spaces, especially when I left the banking industry and went into private wealth, where I was either the only woman, person of color, Black woman. Uh, you name it in every space that I went to, that was kind of the underlying theme. And I think a lot of times you kind of have your head down, you're working, um, you sort of get numb to it. And in a couple instances, you really peek up and realize that, hey, this is this is a really big problem and you get tired of being the only the only in a lot of these spaces. So for me, it was about how do I put something into the world where when we look up in the future, you know, people coming into this industry don't feel that way. People who exist in this industry now that are doing amazing work that are my peers don't continue to feel this way and feel siloed and feel alone. And that's really why I wanted to bring uh, CHIP to fruition. You know, after the uh, murder of George Floyd, it really um, just just sparked uh, another reminder in me about who we are as people in this, in this uh, country and really wanted to make sure that we're seen, we're heard, our voices do matter and visibility and representation is extremely important. So being able to make sure consumers of color are seen and heard and also financial professionals of color are seen and heard as well was extremely important for me. And our bigger uh, goal is really to help close the racial wealth gap along with our peers and other professionals in the industry who are doing such amazing work. I really love what you said because congratulations to you on all the amazing accolades, but I love what you said because you said it's not just about diversity and, and inclusion, it's really about equity and representation and feeling represented, being respected, feeling heard. Um, how many, um, I, I would say, I know that, am I allowed to say this? Hopefully, you, if I'm not, you could edit this out, but I joined CHIP and I'm so proud to be part of your community. If it's okay, um, are you allowed to share, you don't have to say numbers or growth or anything, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but the response from consumers and, because this is very special, we have the consumers, we also have the advisors, what the response has been like. Yeah, it's been a great response um, thus far. I mean, I think we have a lot of room to really grow on both sides of the platform, but it's still really exciting. And of course, yes, thank you uh, for joining. I, I, you know, it's been really well received with a lot of my peers. I think anytime you put anything into the world, you never know how people are going to receive it. Uh, but even early on, when I first started reaching out to different professionals, yourself included, and just making time to really understand people's stories, get to know um, who else is in this space that I didn't know before, 
it was welcome with open arms, right? There's a lot of people that I knew of in the industry that I didn't really know. And, you know, once we got that time to really talk and get to know each other deeper and understanding their stories and hearing about some of the similar challenges that we all faced in this industry, it was great, right? You start to feel like you're not by yourself, but you do have this community of other individuals to tap into and support you on this journey. And I would like to say, and I'm very happy to say that a lot of my peers in this industry whether I have met them yet or will meet them in the future, have been super supportive. Uh, and not just them, but just other people in this industry as well who aren't necessarily in traditional financial services as it relates to being an advisor or um, you know, certified financial planner or, or, or planner in general, but also have been really, uh, really supportive and encouraging because running a startup and being an entrepreneur is crazy. <laughs> But it's it's been great to have all the support of my peers. And the same thing on the consumer end as well. I mean, when we first launched, we really did have this heavy push and in, in testing our beta and getting it out there um, and seeing, you know, professionals be able to close some business on our platform or at least get connected and move to that next meeting. And that's really what we want to see. Um, so we know that proof of concept is there. And now we're really focusing on growth going into next year. And that is incredible because part of changing how individuals prosper is like really changing the conversations about wealth. Um, you and I connected. And I think that's just what's incredible. Has, has anything surprised you? And if so, what has surprised you about that? Uh, I think, I don't know if it's really been any big surprises. I think it's just re um, or just affirmations and confirmations about the things that we're building and the need for it. Um, not too many surprises around why or, or people knowing that, hey, we need to normalize the conversation around money, especially in communities of color. There's no real surprise there when we start to look at all the statistics around those that are in the industry and then, you know, the amount of spending power that we have as um, people of color or, or Black and Latinx in this country. I think it's a matter of just normalizing the conversation, continuing to have the conversation, making sure that the access an opportunity is open because there's so much to do and so much we can do with our finances. But a lot of it is because we just don't have the ease of access. We don't know who to talk to or who to trust. And there's a lot of communication breakdown um, within those barriers, right? So it's really about breaking down the barriers. So there weren't too many shocking moments or surprises, um, just more of a continued confirmation of why CHIP needs to exist, why other organizations who are doing similar uh, work in different avenues need to exist and why consumers are so important to really be a part of this ongoing uh, mission to close the racial wealth gap. So Dana, you know that we have financial advisors, we also have consumers listening. So from the consumer who's listening, who wants to find someone who quote, air quote, gets them or understands them, respects them, um, what is that process in the site? And then you can also tell us the process for a financial professional. Oh, sure. So from a consumer standpoint, when you come to our website, which is chipprofessionals.com, you can fill out a quick questionnaire. And we're really just trying to kind of get to know you uh, through where you are, who you're, where you're located, your pronoun preference and who you want to work with. If you want someone local or not, I think, you know, if we have to look at the underlying, you know, quote unquote, beauty of what um, happened or has happened because of COVID, it's the fact that there is this open ability to working with anyone and having more trust there. Right. And that has done something amazing to the industry because now consumers don't necessarily just have to work with professionals that are in their you know backyards they can also start to open themselves up to working with people who they just kind of get or or get them so once they're finished filling out that questionnaire we help to pair them with their best fit based on the information that we receive and then we help them set up their first meeting and they're good to go from there and we're hoping that it's a really good pair if not they can you know definitely come back uh, to the website if they want to explore more options. On the professional end, we have an application uh, that they fill out. So we do do our own due diligence and making sure that every professional on our platform, we're checking their background. Uh, we're doing all of those things as it comes to with the industries and the licensing and all the security stuff that they have. Once they're done filling out our standard application, um, once they're approved, they're on our platform. And right now we do have our memberships up so they can kind of choose uh, which membership they want to come into, and then they have full access to everything that we're building now and will continue to build uh, in the future. So we hope it's a it's a pretty easy process. I think we try to make it 
as seam seamless as possible, but as we continue to scale, it'll be a much better experience on both sides. So Dana, you got to tell us about the different types of memberships because we want more people to join the platform so yeah. we can have more individuals. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have uh, two options uh, from a professional standpoint. It's still free for consumers. Uh, professionals can join our Starter Plus, uh, which is an annual rate. They get access to our community that we're continuing to build. They get access to um, our consumer pipeline, which is about, again, they're getting their best fit, or they can come in from a network only perspective. So some people uh, might be in this industry, not necessarily looking to continue to grow their business, or they just kind of want to be in the room and just more so network and um, join the referral groups that we're putting together. They have that option to do that as well. So you can come in as networking only or networking and then also getting access to different consumers. Awesome. I know we spoke about spoke uh, earlier in the year, one of the things that you were very passionate about is creating that community for people to connect. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the community is, is really important too. I mean, as I was saying, I feel like if I had a little bit more community earlier on in my career, uh, you know, I might have had a little bit more success possibly faster. But, you know, I, I also believe everything happens for a reason, right? So I might not have been here. Uh, but I don't think it has to be as hard as it is, right? Things seem to be so hard when I was starting out in this industry. And it's great to see more individuals come into this industry. And it gets it's getting not necessarily easier. It's always, you know, you're still building a business. But if we can knock down a lot of those barriers and make great connections for people immediately, that's what it's about, right? It's about being able to build that network fast, right? So you have those referral relationships in those groups and you're building that trust and rapport and also developing your own personal brand and unique style within this industry, right? Not everyone wants to work with every client. Not every client wants to work with every, you know, professional, but it's about really finding your groove and being able to learn from others who are in the industry and even those who are career changers. Right. Those are great people to have in this industry as well. They're bringing wealths of knowledge from other industries um, and being able to have that connection if you're coming into financial services uh, is extremely important. No doubt. I mean, I know there's been times and actually uh, this actually happened to the first in-person conference I went to this year. Somebody asked me when they were serving dinner. They thought I was staff. And I was really sweet about it. I'm like, well, because it's the pandemic. You get your food inside, but we got to eat outside. So it's still happening today, but I was able yeah. to take it with stride. <laughs> yeah, that, that has happened to me more times than I can unfortunately uh, probably count on my hand, but it's, it, it's still the sad reality of things, right? You know, when you're in that room and you're possibly there to speak and you kind of are constantly reminded of who you are, which is something that, you know, a lot of our other counterparts don't have to go through, right? You're not constantly being reminded um, that you're a person of color, that you're Black, that you're Latinx, that you're Asian Pacific, right? For a second, you're coming in and you're that speaker, you're that expert, but then, <laughs> you know, here you are reminding me that I'm the wait staff, right? Or that I could be uh, the staff. Uh, so it's something that we're still still dealing with. It's something that I challenge people to not lead in with, right? So kind of go back to that empathetic um, space and put yourself in that person's positions and think about what your own biases are to make sure you even ask that question, right? What is it within you that's making you ask that person that? Absolutely. And like, I guess I was like, sure. I like, yeah, I mean, I'm hungry too. So do you know when they're serving food, where they're serving food? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> It's oh, just that we're, you know, hopefully we will continue to to work out, um, hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> so as we wrap up, of course, uh, website, but any parting words, pearls of wisdom that you can share? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really just like to always tell people to remember to be kind and to be empathetic. And, you know, there's a lot going on in this world. You know, COVID has taught us a lot about taking time to really put time into ourselves and also just be mindful of others. And I think that sometimes we forget a lot about the fact that everyone on this on this earth that we share space with is human at the end of the day. It has feelings. It has families. It is someone to someone else. And I think when we start really remembering that, we can kind of lead from a more empathetic space and be a lot more supportive and encouraging to those, even if we don't necessarily understand their backgrounds or their traditions or their ethnicities, dialects, language. 
I mean, the list goes on, but I think when you can start from a place of being kind, being empathetic, um, and letting people be authentically themselves, uh, that's kind of all the things that I, I like to say. But outside of that, you know, get off that soapbox. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at chipprofessionals.com. When, if you go directly to our website, you can find me on Twitter at Dana Disrupts uh, and also on Instagram at Dana Disrupts, Instagram for our business at Chip Professionals. And feel free to learn more about me at Dana Wilson, Dana L. Wilson.com. Well, thank you, Dana. It's a wrap. Now back to you, Hope. <laughs> thank you so much, ladies. Dana, wow, you're such a great powerhouse. Cheers to you, sister. Really, keep doing what you're doing. Cheers. Need Unfortunately, I only have water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my, my margarita glass. <laughs> you know, we're just so proud and impressed and thrilled to bring you to our viewers because really what you're doing is much needed and much appreciated. So from the incandescent family and Rita Chang, we, uh, we just say thank you. And Rita, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're glad to do this on Monday to accommodate everybody's schedules. And we'll be back again on Friday. That is December 3rd with Esther Diaz from the Piggy Box. Tell us a little bit about her. So Esther's going to be here to help us learn how to teach children about money. One of my favorite topics. So um, tune in. It's particularly relevant this time. It's always important. But as we enter giving season, teaching kids about money will also help us um, change conversations about wealth and that's what we're here to do excellent excellent yes yeah, so happy thanksgiving to everyone from last week and here's to a happy holiday season may this new variant of covid not take us all down <laughs> and just keep doing the good work so thank you dana thank you miss rita you. hope pets gibbs with the incandescent network we'll see you all on friday december 3rd on margaritas with margarita chang cfp pro take care mm -hmm.